What were the professionals thinking? Were professional security analysts and money managers probing deeply enough into the financial engineering that was going on behind the scenes? Let me relate a personal experience. In 1997, SEC Chairman Arthur Levitt commissioned the U.S. Independence Standards Board to consider the state of financial reporting, focusing on whether auditors were in fact independent of the clients for whom they were providing attestation services. That now-forgotten board included four independent members and four members of the profession, CEOs from three of the then Big Five accounting firms and the president of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. William T. Allen, the eminent jurist and former chancellor of the Delaware Court of Chancery, served as chairman, and I was privileged to serve with him. In the course of the ISB's work, we retained a respected consulting firm, Earnscliff Research and Communications, to prepare a study assessing the perceptions of various constituencies regarding the concept of auditor independence and objectivity. The firm interviewed 133 senior executives from constituencies that included CEOs and CFOs of SEC registrants, audit committee chairs, audit partners, and research analysts from both the sell side and the buy side. A clean bill of health for financial reporting. Chairman Allen and I also met with a small group of experienced and financially astute securities analysts from eight major money management firms. In that meeting, these experts expressed comfort with the integrity of both accountants and financial statements, albeit with a general willingness to accept that the auditor paid by the client cannot be truly independent. They also expressed the belief that the auditor's reputational capital would prevent fraud. No one noted that an auditor with a reputation for standing rigidly against the demands of management would likely not be in business for very long. Only one analyst among the eight, Trevor Harris of Morgan Stanley, expressed a serious concern. Auditors have stopped thinking for themselves and have become clerks who are hiding behind rules and putting form ahead of substance. He expressed serious concern with the integrity of financial statements which are sure to be revealed when the stock market collapses. The survey itself clearly indicated that the concerns Harris expressed were not widely shared, and financial reporting and auditing were given a clean bill of health. In its November 1999 report, Earnscliff reported a clear consensus among executives that the standard of financial reporting in the U.S. was excellent, that the actual figures being reported were painting an accurate picture of the financial health of the company involved, that very few believe the auditors have much to do with aggressive earnings management, and that most financial reporting could be trusted. As to the provision of both audit and consulting services to the same client, almost everyone favored disclosure over prohibition. While some of those surveyed expressed concern about earnings management, the consensus was that the SEC had overstated the problem of auditor independence and worried that overregulation would drive good people out of the auditing profession. When the Earnscliff report was published, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants engaged in a bit of hyperbolic breastbeating. We share the report's view, the Institute proudly proclaimed, that the state of financial reporting in the United States is extremely strong and agree that the media have created a perception that there is a serious problem where none exists. Do tell. Six years and one great bear market later, we now know that the sunny but naive conventional wisdom of that earlier era, shared not only by CEOs and CFOs and by audit committee chairmen and auditors, but by security analysts as well, turned out to be the platitudes of the self-interested. Most members of the investment community, broadly defined, were participants in the happy, ingenuous, and mutually advantageous conspiracy, sometimes unwitting, sometimes clearly not. As the stock market soared to its hitherto unimaginable peak in early 2000, the madness of the crowds of Investment America's knowledgeable, professional market participants finally encompassed almost all investors.